Um, yeah, sort of to address what you were saying, Steve, um, I, I sort of knew that um, comics, you know, in that format, they're really hard to get to bookstores. A lot of places won't carry them. Um, comic book stores, you know, certainly are, are uh, you know, agreeable to this format. So, some, Some are, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, then you have to, to, to really work twice as hard to get them across the country unless you have a distributor. So, kind of in boiling down and considering all of these things, I decided that when I uh, wrote my uh, grant proposal, that I wanted to have a work format, something that was perfect bound, something that had a, a UPC code in it, something that I could, you know, uh, farm out to uh, not just uh, day bookstores, but also, you know, just sort of at large, uh, hopefully have a shot at getting them in that sort of maybe not larger chains, but, you know, independent bookstores, uh, certainly. Um, and also, you know, to get it online, have something a little more compact, maybe to try and sell at Amazon or something like that. Um, so that was what I initially proposed, and I knew that the, the uh, to, to print something like that, like maybe a 200 page perfect bound thing is going to be a lot of money. So, and originally sort of pitched in, in the, the Prism grant that it was going to be partially funding that, and I was going to go out and, and go for this area and also um, privately funded, um, personally funded myself. Um, and in the course of winning it and uh, you know continuing on uh, working on the third issue, um, I had some interest actually from a, a couple publishers. So it looks like. It looks as though I'm not going to have to use the grant money for that anymore. So then the next question was, what do I do with this um, you know, wonderful money? Um, it's not often that people give you comics to, or I'm sorry, give you money to make comics. So um, I decided um, I would almost try and use it as a line of credit. Um, someone else used the word endowment earlier. Uh, so like a, a prism sort of line of credit where I would keep it in a savings account, use it to print. I actually do a lot of um, publishing out of my apartment um, with my own large format printer. And I have a real like sort of art studio background, so I have no problem assembling it and stapling it. Um, so I can actually make almost on demand my own comics. So I decided to use the, the Prism um, grant money, uh, put it in the savings account. Uh, the, the material costs are not huge for me to make this. It's more my own personal time. So uh, when I release a new issue or, or a mini like this, um, which is what I'm going to be primarily using the Prism um, grant for, as soon as I make the money back, I'm going to put it back into that savings account. So I have like a little nest egg that I can keep kind of replenishing and actually growing. And the great part of that is I get to, in the inside, I haven't done it yet, but on the next mini, I get to put, you know, partially funded by, or actually entirely funded by, the, the Prism Comics brand, um, which, you know, is obviously, I want to pay a huge sort of thanks to you guys, but it also keeps getting the word out there about the Bird Press brand itself and what you can do with it if you're willing to sort of um, you know, play around with the money and, and work hard at actually like publishing it yourself. Um, I do print out um, uh, with the uh, actual printing presses for my sort of sequential issues, um, but I decided I did want to keep the prison money rather than kind of using it all in one shot to, to do these little ones a couple times a year. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of where I'm at right now. I haven't started, but next year, uh, especially, well, probably after eight, but for WonderCon, those are going to be the first issues that I actually start publishing. Uh, I also <clears throat> I had a, a mini comic of Amazonia's Adventures, um, and I ended up uh, the my proposal for the grant was to do a collection um, of for a, a book collection with a spine. So perfect balance, you know, spine and ISBN numbers, so, so you can actually sell that through the, the bookstores as well as the comic book stores. Um, and what I realized is, that, you know, eventually that uh, this project was kind of bigger than I really wanted to be self-publishing, um, especially doing something that was. You know, full color and, and the size that it's going to be. Um, so I'm going to be working with the publisher as well. Um, Sam, in fact. That sounds incestuous, isn't it? Um, but um, but what I what I did was I ended up using the money to make more. You know, another couple of runs of the mini comic, which I've been able to, to sell, and then also um, to pay. I, I brought in another illustrator, Diego Gomez, who's really quite talented. Um, to help me do um, illustrate one part of the book. Um, so I was able to you know, pay him with that money as well. So all the money has gone back into the Glenn's Audio project just in kind of different ways than I expected. Uh, I, I, I don't feel bad about that. I mean, I think that, you know, now speaking where I, I'm on the other side now of the grant uh, process where I'm kind of you know, reviewing applications, um, a big part of that application, you know, grant process is um, uh, showing that you have a business plan. And it's very important to have that business plan there and you know solid and well thought out. 
Um, but it's it's less. It feels to me that it's less important exactly if, it, if things happen exactly as that plan is, you know, delineates, as opposed to um, you know you, you really want to show that you are serious about this, that you're going to be producing comics with the money, um, and you know that you'll be getting the work out there. You know the prison doesn't want to throw money into a kind of black hole, uh, and, and you know a lot of there's a lot of wonderful creators out there who just don't who make great work but don't have the kind of drive or business savvy to actually get the work out to the public. And, you don't want the uh, the grant money to go to people that will just kind of sit on it and, and not actually put the work out there. How the work gets out there exactly is less important. As long as it's not going for you know, employers and luxury hotels, because we're not dealing with we're not uh, control candidates <laughs> or, or uh, anti-gay expert witnesses, I guess. Um, so you unless it's right like fuel for an autobiographical comment. Yeah, yeah, that's right. just research. Right? <laughs> research. <Yes. laughs> Honest, it's research. Um, curious, how many of you, first of all, have any of you uh, submitted material for the grant reform? Good, nothing will be thrown in the past. That's, that's a victory. Uh, how many of you are thinking about it? Yay. Cool. Um, Justin got right up to the edge of talking about the process, so do you want to say a little more about? what the process and the timeline looks like and all the things that we expect people to submit, you know, not, you know, bottle of fluid samples or anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's for people to see the way. Well, I, mean, I think we're all pretty proud of it in the sense that it's, it's the only other um, uh, major kind of, or the only other grant for independent comics, as far as I know, in, in, in the state besides the Zara, um, which is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know that, it's also another great Grant to check out the Sarah Foundation. They, uh, I was created by um, uh, uh, Layer uh, No, the other one. Oh, Peter um, uh, Of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, he used the money that he, the you know, some part of the huge amount of money that he made to, to, to help support him in uh, comic books, self-publishing comics. Um, obviously, the Queer Press Grant is more specifically targeted to LGBT uh, independent comics. But um, so you know, the, we, we have a we've actually changed the deadline. Uh, this year to be September 15th. Uh, it used to be October 1st, so FYI. Uh, September 15th is the application deadline, um, submission deadline. And what we're going to do is actually announce the winners at the Alternative Press Expo in San Francisco, which is October 15th and 16th, or 16th and 17th. Um, so in the past, we've had problems where, you know, given that we're a nonprofit, volunteer organization, you know, have, have problems getting everyone to kind of, you know, uh, review the applications in time, and you know, so oftentimes it'll be several months before between the you know the, the application deadline and then actually you know, announcing the, the recipients, and that you want to get away from that. So we we, we change the deadline slightly. So September fifteenth is the is the submission deadline, and we'll be re releasing the, uh, the the results on that. Day. And that's going to be a that's going to be a pretty hard deadline. So uh, what I'd recommend that you do, since the the so call for submissions basically starts as soon as the um, grant is awarded for the year. I mean, you, you can submit it any time during the year after that deadline. I'd recommend that you go ahead and try to submit maybe a month early so that you have time, because if there's something missing or incomplete, or if we have a recommendation about something you could change in your, your proposal, we can always work with you to, to do that, because we want your uh, submission to be as complete as possible also. Yeah. We all want you to submit the best possible submission you can. So try to do it uh, early so that we have time to fix any issues. Perhaps you guys could clarify for people who've never written a business plan before, because I, so I know that certainly wasn't my background when I was writing. And I've, I've got two now, one for Zurich and four and for the Prism. But in terms of my understanding, the business plan isn't the same as if you're like doing a real corporation. It's just basically a list of pragmatic steps you're going to take to get the book out there. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, and, and the, the, the format is flexible and, and you right. kind of um, I think the most important thing to know is, is that you've done some research into yeah. who the players are and, and who distributors are and how you're actually going to get this into stores because it's it's really not a case of if you build it, they will come. They will not come. They will not care one way or another who, what you're doing. And you have to make I've, every client yourself. I've seen that happen to creators who like uh, produce incredibly beautiful work 
get it all printed, you find out who the printers are, right? Which is a whole other issue. Like, you know, if you find out who the printers are and pay the printers, and then you get the, the work back, but then didn't take the extra step to find out what the distribution system was and what the retail system was. So, right. you know, there's there's you know it, there are a number of steps to get from you know from your your pet, your, your brush to the you know to the actual finished product. And then involved in that is uh, advertising outreach. Uh, how can you stretch your advertising dollars, which are going to be rather thin, how can you stretch those as far as possible using social media, using uh, any kind of free uh, YouTube videos or uh, you know, guerrilla tactic outreach kind of things, uh, convention appearances, press releases, all these kind of things you can use. Those are, those are not things you're gonna spend money on, but they're definitely, definitely part of your business plan because they demonstrate that you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be scrappy and you're gonna use your money as wisely as you can and as, as sparingly as you can only when you absolutely have to. And even something like setting a price point. I mean, if you deal with Bookazine, who's a real, actually a pretty gay, lesbian friendly uh, distributor, or even Diamond Comics, they take forty percent. They they pay you for about forty percent of the cover price. So if, if your book selling for ten bucks and it costs you six dollars a copy to print it, then you have <laughs> then you're you're going to be uh, it's all for the losing, love. You're losing money. money. Yeah. That, that actually happened to me in my, my first series, Two Travel Tales, I um, which I. I, um, yeah, I, I ended up printing a bunch of these, and, and every time I sold through diamonds, I lost 30 cents, I think. That's kind of sad. But you make them more in volume. Uh, yeah, it's just in the sheer artistic joy that makes me sad. So are any of these considering uh, not print projects, but web projects? That's also completely uh, viable. I and mean, I think increasingly the, the, the world of, of comics is moving on, you know, as with all publishing, moving over to web things. So, and this is a really interesting moment for in, in terms of comic publishing and publishing in general. So um, <clears throat> having, you know, we're very flexible in terms of uh, what, the, what these kind of business plans look like because the, the world of publishing is so up in the air right now. I mean, no one knows what the new paradigm's gonna be. So if you've got some ideas, put them in your business plan. And the, the same considerations still apply. You're not researching printers, but you're researching service providers. You're researching uh, how to tap into ad networks, how to tap into other um, both paid and non-paid tools for publicity. Um, potentially uh, electronic publishers as well. Um, Sam? 